Okay, so who is Jesus? He is what God looks like. He was before everything. Everything was made by him. Everything above the earth, everything on the earth, everything you can see, everything you can't see, every kind of creature with every kind of power. He made everything, and it was all for him. He was the first of everything. He holds everything together. The church is his body. He is the head on the body. He was the first one made alive forever after being dead. All of God lives in Jesus. Jesus is the way everyone can come to God. Jesus died on the cross for us, so we can live with God forever too. Hello church, welcome. Today is the day that the Lord has made, amen. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I'm Pastor Corey, Goshen First Brethren Church. Thanks for joining us for worship today. I hope that wherever you are at, whomever you're with, that you can encounter Jesus in some transformative way today as we worship together. So as our opening video shared so helpfully, we place our hope in the good news of Jesus and the restored life that we find in him. So I hope that that can be a guide for us as we join and worship today. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I want to encourage you to take some time wherever you're at and, uh, to get your mind and spirit in the right place to, to encounter God with praise today. As we share some, some songs and some devotional reflections today, I also want to invite you to share with us. Uh, share in the comments with your own words of praise, with any prayer concerns that you'd like to make known to our community. Uh, you can comment now and share the things. What are you thankful for? Uh, what has God been up to in your life to, uh, this week? How can we join you in prayer today? What, what prayer concerns do you have that you want to offer uh, to God that we can join you in? Share those in the comments. Uh, and as you do that, um, coming up here in a second, our praise band is going to lead us in worship. So, uh, so I'm, I'm just going to start us out in prayer today. Would you join me? <sighs> Jesus, we welcome you into our midst. Not as if you weren't already there, but Lord, uh, we open up, open up our hearts that you might be the Lord of our lives once more. Uh, may your name be magnified in us, and may your hope be made manifest in our hearts as we open up our spirits to your praise. We pray that in your wonderful and your holy name. Amen.
Amen, amen. So uh, as we continue in, in worship today, I'm excited to introduce a guest speaker for this week. Many of you are aware that we've had some interns with us this summer. Uh, they're here for about eight weeks throughout the summer, and uh, it's been really a blessing to have them here in different ways. Uh, today, one of our interns, Caitlin Wirtz, is going to share her first ever message with us today. I have been, uh, so it's been such a privilege for me uh, to see Caitlin's heart and passion for ministry with our kids uh, over the last several weeks, and now she gets to share some of, some of that gifting, some of that passion, some of that wisdom and grace uh, with the rest of the, the wider church. So uh, uh, I'm excited to hear what she has to say for us, and uh, I hope that you will be as well. Uh, one of the things for myself that is the most encouraging as a pastor is whenever uh, I'm able to hear from people and see that they are engaging with uh, the, the scriptures that we read together and, and, and the messages that, uh, that, that I share and, and the ability to, to grow more in Jesus. Like what, what questions are people asking? What insights are, are they bringing to things? So I'm going to invite you to encourage Caitlin as well today by sharing in the comments. Uh, you know, what things are resonating with you, both in the scripture and in her message? What questions do you still have about the things that are coming out of the text? And, and how can you live your life differently or worship God more in response to what is being brought out of the text today? So feel free to share those things in the comments. I know it'll be a blessing to Caitlin uh, as much as uh, all of this is a, a blessing to, to us and, and to the Lord as we reflect upon his word. So, all right, Caitlin. Take it away. Hi, everybody. My name is Caitlin. I'm one of the interns here this summer. I am so excited to be here with you this Sunday, and I'm so excited to be sharing the message with you. Um, I'm going to say a quick prayer, and then we can get started. Lord, I would like to thank you for everyone who's tuning in right now. I would like to... Um, ask for any healing that needs to take place. Um, and I would like to ask you for openness to what people have to hear from you today. And I ask that uh, you speak to them. We love you and praise you, amen. All right, so last week, Pastor Corey taught us about Philip and how he was excited to reach out and teach people about Jesus. Philip taught and he baptized many people. One of Corey's points was that it's important to be willing to reach out to others. Um, it's good to have friends who are not Christians. It can help in your work as disciples to reach out and make connections um, if you're already friends with them. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to lead people to Christ. So something that I've experienced, and I'm sure many others have as well, is that when I tell people that I'm a Christian, they instantly expect some type of judgment. Um, a couple of years ago, I got a tattoo with my sister. And when I told one of my atheist friends, um, about it. He looked at me and he was super concerned. Um, I could just see the worry written all over his face. He was so worried. And I asked him what was going on and he just goes, doesn't that mean you're going to hell? <sighs> so this was a great opening for being able to talk about my friend's views and how Christians actually are versus, um, how he views them to be. Um, I was able to tell my friends that Jesus loves me, and even though I have a tattoo. Um, but that's a little bit easier to understand or explain. Um, some conversations are much more difficult. I've been told that a person felt they would never be accepted by the church because they had an abortion or because they were a teen mom. Um, but here's the good news. Um, God will still use that person. God will use the unlikeliest of people to do his work. Today, we'll be talking about the story of Saul. Some background information 
is that the story is taking place after the death of Stephen, during the same time that Philip was evangelizing. Uh, we are in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Um, so you can turn to that in your Bibles, or it will be up on the screen. Let's read. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he found any there who believed, who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now, get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days, he was blind, and did not eat or drink anything. All right, so there are a couple of important points to note in this passage. Um, one is that the very first verse states that Saul was breathing out murderous threats. That means that as naturally as we breathe, Saul was spewing out threats to the early church. You should know that Saul believed with every fiber of his being that he was doing the right thing. I was trying to come up with an example of what this might look like for us today, and our intern Lydia told me a story, so now I'm going to tell you. Um, one of Lydia's brothers is five years older than she is, and growing up, Lydia's brother would tease her and be mean to her, as many older siblings are to their younger siblings. So Lydia um, would be mean right back to her brother. And when her mom confronted her about it, five-year-old Lydia would tell her mother that she was practicing the golden rule. Lydia was five years old. And she believed with her entire self that she was doing the right thing. Uh, when she looks back at this time, she recognizes that she had a misunderstanding of what the true meaning of the golden rule is. Um, that it's better to love her brother, even when he was being mean. But at the time, being mean right back to him made the most sense. And she believed she was right. <laughs> Um, similarly, Saul believed that he was doing the right thing in trying to dismantle the early church. Um, the second thing to notice in this passage is that Saul literally fell down when he saw Jesus. How could a man he believed to be dead, who he had been imprisoning people for believing in, stand right before him? Many people are confused or possibly feel hurt that do they that they do not receive strong, clear messages from God the way that we often see in scripture. That may be a good thing though, if you haven't experienced it. Um, we see it the most in the Bible when people are either about to make a terrible decision or when God is completely turning their plans around. Um, today, we're more likely to experience quiet conversations with God. Uh, for example, when I pray um, and ask God if I should do something, I tend to hear a solid no or a quiet wait or a quiet 
yes. Um, I don't hear God's voice audibly, but I feel his voice in my heart. Uh, there have been times that I've asked God to tell me whether or not it's a good idea for me to become friends with someone or to date someone. And I've heard him tell me no, and I have heard him tell me yes. Hearing from God can be different for everyone. Uh, some people hear God in the quiet of meditation. Others may hear him more clearly during worship. God can also use other people to speak to you and uh, tell you what he wants you to hear. With this, I will caution you. Um, if someone tells you something that does not align with scripture, it is not God talking to you. Uh, but either way, it's very, very rare that people experience something like Saul's encounter. Uh, so when Saul saw Jesus, it was a huge deal. Um, upon seeing Jesus, Saul fell. He fell to the ground. Um, that's a pretty good example of how dramatically intense Saul was. Um, Saul was full speed ahead with his plans to dismantle the early church. And then he was blinded for persecuting Jesus. Um, after the events in our passage, Saul traveled for another three days to reach Damascus. When he was there, he met a man named Ananias who healed his vision. After a few days of learning from disciples in the town, Saul changed his ways and he began to preach. I'm, I'm going to repeat that for you. He changed his ways and he began to share the word of Jesus. Saul was a man who, no matter what he did, he did it with full force, full speed. If we think of exercise, we have a couple of metaphors. Um, a walk, a jog, or a sprint. Um, when you walk, you're using less of your energy and you can walk for a very long period of time. When you jog, you use more of your energy, and you can't jog for as long as you can walk. A sprint uses a very large amount of your energy, and you can't sprint for anywhere near as long. Saul was interesting in spreading the news. Um, Saul was not somebody who would walk. He would sprint full speed ahead. Um, he used all of his energy and all that he did. Uh, he did not stop using all of his energy and all that he did, even when he stopped persecuting Jesus and the early church. He did not pause or take a break from doing things. Um, he, he turned around and he sprinted in the other direction, spreading the news about Jesus. He went from actively trying to imprison and hurt people in the early church to be the person who spread the word of Jesus the fastest and the most effectively. Saul was the very last person anyone would have expected to spread the word of Jesus and to build the early church. He was completely unlikely, but God saw that he could use Saul. So what does that mean for us today? Um, we don't see people being blinded for actively persecuting other people. So how does the story have anything to do with us? Saul was unlikely. And God will use those who are unlikely. You'll never know whose God is going to use to build his kingdom. 
it could be hard to think that if someone is more of a dog person or more of a cat person or vice versa, that God could use them to build his kingdom. But he can. And in fact, it doesn't matter which you prefer. God can and he will use you. Today, we may consider those who are on one side or another of the political spectrum to be unlikely, but it doesn't matter which side someone is on. God is still using that person to build his kingdom. Now, if at some point along the road, you realize that you are misunderstanding or in the wrong, you are allowed to be incorrect. You are allowed to change your views or your actions. People are allowed to change. That's one of our points today. Um, people are allowed to change. As the church, we meet people where they are at. We need to allow people to change. Saul's story is all about changing. He was a man that destroyed families and ruined lives. He thought he was doing the right thing. When he found out he was in the wrong, it was because of Jesus. Jesus appeared to Saul and asked why he was persecuting him. Saul was completely perplexed that he was in the wrong. And then he was blinded. Um, even though Saul was hurting people for believing in Jesus, and God had the power to just wipe Saul off of the planet, he didn't. Jesus was not harsh or do anything harmful towards Saul. Instead, he made sure that there is a place prepared for Saul once he arrived in Damascus and made sure that Saul would be healed. Jesus was loving and he met Saul on his journey. As the church, we should be meeting people on their journey as well. We should be allowing personal development in a safe place where God is free to transform people into who they're designed to be. It's not helpful to hold a person to what they may have said before they had a change of heart. People grow and people change. Um, this is a spoiler alert, um, but it's similar to Star Wars. Um, in the end of the original trilogy, uh, towards the end of Darth Vader's life, he changed from being an evil dictator to being a fairly de decent person. Um, and Saul changed. Saul had tried to destroy the early church. Then he changed and helped to build the kingdom of God. Um, God can and will use those who are unlikely. So that's our second point for today. Uh, God can and he will use those who are unlikely. When I was in fifth grade, um, my aunt died. I wasn't very close to her. I only saw her at Christmas every couple of years. Um, my aunt was a very kind woman. She cared a lot about people. Um, she was a wonderful person, but she struggled with addiction. She struggled with it for most of her life. Um, and ultimately, it's what caused her death. When I was at her funeral, many people, many people spoke about how my aunt affected their lives. And I found out that my aunt, who was addicted to various different things, 
um, she would take all of the kids that lived by her to church every Sunday. I learned that my aunt would tell stories about Jesus to complete strangers. It's just what she did. Um, God uses the unlikeliest of people. People like my aunt who struggled with addiction, the girl who had an abortion when she was 16, or even, even that annoying guy at the grocery store who just talks way too loudly on his phone. Um, all of them are unexpected. The ones that we might not expect to be leaders for God, but they can be. Um, they're all important and all are loved by Jesus. So today I am challenging you to allow, to allow those you may think of as unexpected to be used by God. Allow them to be used by God. Um, most, if not all people, identify with the unexpected at some point in life. Whether they grew up in the church or not, a person could grow up in the church and still have a life event happen that causes that person to feel like they are unwanted, unloved, or forgotten by God. A person could also feel that way if they did not grow up in the church. But those feelings are not truths. They are not truths. Um, the person that feels that way or has felt that way in the past is a beloved child of God. So even when we feel like we are beyond God's use, he has a plan for how he will use us. Um, that's something that Corey, Lydia, and I talk about during our internship. Um, no matter what I do or what someone does to hurt me, I am a child of God. That is what my identity is. That is what your identity is, a beloved child of God. Do we do things that disappoint God? Yes. Just like our friends, our siblings, our parents, or our children can disappoint us. The difference, though, is that you can lose friends over time. You can be disowned by your earthly parents. But God is never going to do that to you. God wants a connection with you. You're his kid. I like the way that our intern Lydia puts it. You can love your brother or your sister, but you're not always going to like your brother or your sister. Um, so to my parents and the audience, you know how crazy you are about your child but they definitely do things that cause you to dislike them from time to time. And to my kiddos in the audience, you know that your parents do things that frustrate you and will cause you to dislike them sometimes, even though you still love them. But here's the thing. God doesn't just love us. He actually really likes us all of the time nothing you do have done or experienced will ever be so awful that god will stop liking you you will never stop being a child of god no matter what you say or do you are a beloved child of god and he will use you that is our third point today, that no matter what you say or do, you are a beloved child of God and he will use you. God will use you through the hardships, he will use the unlikely, and he will use you when you feel that you are unlikely. <sighs> Saul made poor decisions. He was a very intense person who truly believed he was doing the right thing in trying to dismantle the early church. 
He was the last person anyone in the early church would have expected to spread the news of Jesus. He was unlikely. And God saw this and used him. God took one of the most unlikely people and used him to spread the news across the land. God can and he does use anyone, especially those we deem as unlikely. So we have to allow the unlikely to be leaders when God is forming them into the leaders they are meant to be. The disciples were nervous about Saul spreading the news of Jesus, but they allowed him to step into that role that God had given him. God has grace for us. He knows that we mess up. He knows that we will make mistakes and he continues to love us. God showed his compassion and love for us by sending Jesus to die for us. And while Jesus was on earth, he spent time with those who were considered unlikely. Jesus spent time with the prostitutes, the tax collectors, the children. Jesus loved the people that society rejected because of God's grace. God had grace with Saul, who we know today as Paul. Um, and because of this, Saul went full force and was the person who spread the news of Jesus further than anyone would have expected. Saul was a beloved child of God, and God had those plans in place. Just as you are a beloved child of God, regardless of what you may have done in your past or what you may do in the future, you are a beloved child of God, and he is not done using you for the good of his kingdom. I'm going to share her or her Get that out, please. I'm going to share our heart verse with you for this week. Um, a heart verse is a verse you don't just memorize. It's one that you want to commit to your heart. Um, this week, it's 2 Corinthians 5.17. And it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. This is really important for our message today. Um, that no matter what, God can transform you. He can change you from being one person to being an even better, more amazing person. Um, God can transform you. Uh, with that, I'm going to pray us out. Um, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer and it's okay if we say it differently. Um, I actually say it a little bit differently than how Corey says it, and that's okay. Um, so if you would like to pray with me. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the glory and the power and the kingdom forever. Amen. Lord, I would like to thank you for everyone who is here. Um, I pray that they go forth and that they do good things for um, your kingdom, that they um, allow people to be transformed. And if they themselves 
need to be transformed by you, um, that you do so, and that they allow you to do so. We love you and we praise you. Amen. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining me this week. Um, and I hope you're all looking forward to next week. Um, our other intern, Lydia, is going to be preaching. And she is super excited. I am not sure she might be doing it one-on-one -on -one with you like how I am. Or she might be doing a um, little group discussion with Corey and myself. Um, we're getting that figured out. <laughs> but um, I hope that you're all having a wonderful day. And go forth and let God use you. Bye. <laughs> All right, amen. As uh, as just as Caitlin shared, you know, we uh, next week are are excited to see Lydia Heckert share with us as well in some format, and uh, we hope that you can connect with us in some other way this week as well. We have life group meetings uh, Wednesdays at six thirty, uh, and we weather permitting, we try to meet out in the in the churchyard. Uh, we also have some uh, service projects that we have had in the works. This last week, we got a start on making some masks for some schools in our area. Uh, and we're, we can continue to work on that in the coming weeks. And so if there's any way that you can uh, can help join us in that or join us in our, our devotional studies, feel free to check out our Facebook page for more information on that. Um, and, uh, yeah, we hope that you have a blessed week and we long to connect with you in some way. All right. Thanks. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>